All right, in this particular video, we are going to observe how to apply almost everything we've learned about functions, the notation, the connection to tables, graphs, and equations. Like I say, all balled up into one simple problem. So this problem has to do with the value of a photocopier. And uh, t represents the independent variable, the amount of time since purchase, and v of t represents the dependent variable, that would be the value, depending on how old the machine is. So our tasks are to find uh, v of 4 and state its meaning in context. Um, also, given that v of t is 2,375, we need to figure out uh, what it means to find t and to represent that in context on the original price of the photocopier. And then part D says, determine the domain of this function that is reasonable within the context of the function. Um, and this gives a lot of people trouble, this within the context, but uh, it will all make sense um, if you stay tuned. So, to begin, I haven't, I'm not even going to answer A, B, C, or D. I'm going to spend some time unpacking this function because I'm given the function in equation form. I know I'm going to have to support my work with a graph or a table, so I decided why not I just produce both the graph and the table based off of what I see in front of me. So here's what I see in front of me. I see the value of the copier appears to start at 9,500, so it looks like I got C answered already, and um, I will lose $750 for every year. I know this because if T was 2, I would lose 1,500, that's two 750s, and if T was 4, I would lose 3,000, that's four 750s. So I can take that sensible interpretation and convert that into a table because $1,500 lost every two years, it's a manageable set of numbers. So I let time go advance by two years at a time, no pun intended, and I subtract 1,500 from the value every two years to produce the Y column. The next thing I had to do was to produce a graph. Now you can see the graph over here. Of course, I used a ruler and I labeled the x and y axis. Um, I also used uh, counting by ones and then representing each one representing $1,000 in value. Incidentally, I converted everything to dollars because this is America, um, not euros. Uh, that's just because I changed it to dollars and forgot that it was in euros. So, anyway, I want to talk to you a bit just briefly about making this particular graph. If you look at what I did, you'll see that I plotted a point at 0, 9,500, and then I plotted the points from the table to 8,000, and then I started plotting the point 6, 5,000. Actually, no, I have 4, 6,500. I plotted that point. I realized that all three points were in line. At this time, I decided that it's not worth taking all of these data and putting it up on the graph because I've seen this kind of function before. All the points happen to fall in line. So, just to make sure the graph is quality, I found the last point on the table, 12,500, and plotted that point, and then using a ruler, I connected the first point and the last point, and of course, it fell in line with the other two points that I plotted. So I didn't need to put all these data on the table. I didn't need to waste that kind of time. If this were a test, I certainly would rather use my time doing something a little bit more meaningful than just putting dots on a page. So now let's get to the questions. V of 4, and what does it mean? So here's my work for V of 4. I start off by using the equation because that was the given information. So I want to check what my work is against the given information. So V of 4 is 9,500 minus 750 times 4. All I've done is replace T, substitute T, with 4. 4 times 750 is 3,000. Take that away from 9,500. That's 6,500. And then in my interpretation in English is the value of the copier four years after purchase was 6,500. And here I wrote C table, C graph. Now if I go up here and I see the table and graph, I'm going to write this in later, but the 4, 6,500 is already in my table, and the 4, 6,500 is already on my graph. So it's obviously the correct answer. But what I did do was verify that I'm using the equation the right way. So I have the algebraic approach here, and then I have the table approach and the graphical approach. All three forms say the same truth. The next question was asking about what is V of T equals 2,375 and what does it mean? And what I'm looking for here is when will the value of the copier be 2,375? Here's how I know that's the question. The V is known as a 2,375. The T is unknown. That's the thing that I need to find out. So that's when t is unknown, I say when. 
what time will the value of the copier be 2,375? So this is an algebra class. I need to make sure that I can do a algebra. So the equation was 9,500 minus 750t equals v of t. v of t is equal to 2,375, so these two numbers are the same. And I set them equal to each other. And then I do some algebra. I add 750t to both sides, subtract 2,375 from both sides, and then I have to do this division. And I'm thinking to myself, how can I divide 7,125 by 750 without a calculator? I could do this the hard way with long division, but I have to work a little bit smarter here to finish my test on time. So here's what I know. 2,375, when I look at my table, is more than the value after 10 years. So I know that when I divide this number, I'm going to get a number that's less than 10. I also know that 2,375 is less in value than the value at 8 years. So my, my value of t is going to be between 8 and 10. As a matter of fact, if I go up to 9, I see 2,750. 2,375 is halfway between 2,750 and 2,000. So I can tell from looking at my table that 9.5 is going to be the correct solution to this equation. And if I want to make sure, just to be absolutely certain, I could either multiply 9.5 by uh, 750 and hope to get the right number, um, or or, sorry, I could put this back into the original equation, sorry, and then see that I get 2,375. Or I could try using reducing fractions approach. So instead of long division, I'm going to divide both of these by 5. Because I can do that in my head. So this is 1425 over 150. Those are still divisible by 5, so I get 285 over 30. Those are still divisible by 5, so I get 57 over 6. I reduce that fraction to 9 and 3 6, which is 9 and 1 half. So I have the table approach. I have the reducing fractions approach all in an effort to avoid doing long division. Finally, I interpret my answer in context, and then I write C graph. We go back up to the graph, and I will eventually identify where that solution is, and I already used the table in my work, so we're good to go. Um, The next two questions, the first was the original value of the copier. That's trivial. We already knew it was 9,500. But what I do is I verify using the equation that when t equals 0, the copier mean, will be new. And then I find v of 0 to be 9,500 because it's 0 times 750. In other words, I haven't reduced the cost from the initial price. That again, seen on the graph, seen on the table, common sense. The only thing I can do here is just show off my ability to use proper function notation and function equations. And finally, the domain. The domain is essentially, uh, I'm just thinking, what kind of time should I put into this function? In other words, what could the possible values of time be? Could time be negative? Could time be 5,000? How many years should I be using this equation to determine the value of the copier? So the first thing I notice is this equation will not produce values for the copier before it was new. In other words, t has to be 0 or larger. t cannot be negative, because that would give me the value of the copier before it was new, and that doesn't make any sense. So I restrict the domain to only t values that are 0 or bigger. But also, eventually, there's going to come a time when this copier is worth nothing, and the equation will no longer be useful. So the, in other words, when is the copier going to be worthless? I could look at my graph and see that after 12 years, the value of the copier will be 0. I can also see that in the table, that not much long after 12 years, the value of the copier would be 0. In fact, I could lose $500 probably in 2 thirds of a year. So this is probably 12 and 2 thirds. Here's the math to back that up. The 0 is the value of the copier. T is time. So I can find out when will the value of the copier be 0. And the answer is 12 and 2 thirds. So my domain is 0 is smaller than t is smaller than 12 and 2 thirds. In other words, time can be any number from 0 to 12 and 2 thirds, and that will produce values that are reasonable in the context of the problem. As far as range, even though range wasn't asked here, I will tell you the range is any possible value of the copier. The value was 9,500 when it was new. The value is worth nothing when it's 12 and 2 thirds years old. So the value could be any number between its new value and nothing. 
So let's go back to the graph and the table and show you how you can you, you can label the graph and the table to highlight the answers that you got to previous questions. So here's the original graph and table, and then you'll see some changes right here. For example, I highlighted my answer to number four, or V of four, in the table, and I showed on the graph where V of four is right here. I also showed on the graph how I can see nine and a half is a totally reasonable answer to the question uh, part C. And I could see that in the table that my value is going to make my copier newer than 10 years old and older than 8 years old. So I show where my solution fits in right there. And so as you can see, oh, and then here's my, uh, um, uh, for the domain question, I found 12 and 2 thirds 0 helps support my answer about domain. I could also write in right here 12 and 2 thirds 0, and that would support my domain answer. I hope you found this helpful, and uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy life. We'll talk to you soon.